sat in the guard station that night and just stared at the wall. I didn't cry, lash out, get angry. When the guards asked me about what happened, I just answered them truthfully as I remembered it. Later, they said it was the headbutt that did it. That all the other extra kicks to the head didn't mean anything. It's a big thing in Sligo. He was a running champion. Had run for Ireland, so they said. You know, the usual stuff about a bright young prospect being taken before his time. They even made a documentary about it on prime time. About the scourge of violence on the streets of modern Ireland. The court case was straightforward. As I was 13, I still had a pretty clean criminal record. But the guards were aware of me and believed that I was involved with a criminal gang in town. Also, testimonies from teachers and neighbours did little to help my cause. I was convicted to four years in a remand centre for manslaughter. As part of my conviction, I was to enter the remand centre on the 1st of June, the same day that all my classmates in first year would get their summer holidays. Cruel irony, I suppose. As I was about to get in the car, the doorbell rang. When I opened it, Quiva was standing in the doorway with a little brown package in her hand. She handed me the package and told me not to open it till I got to prison. Then she gave me a big hug, kissed me on the cheek and whispered in my ear. You're paying for what you did wrong, but nothing else was your fault. Do you understand that? Don't forget it. Later that evening, when I got to prison, I opened the package. In it, there was a CD with a compilation of dance tunes. A photo of me and the gang on Castle Street. A tiny jar of patchouli oil. Fuck, she knew. And a little box of eight chocolate marshmallow and biscuit tea cakes.